Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Lee Snyder, the product manager for the Steel segment here at Trimble. And today I want to introduce two new features that are available in Trimble Connect. The first is the property set manager and the second is the content browser. So to begin, I'm here in the 3D view and I'm just going to zoom in and select a member. And then if I come down here, I can click on the view property panel button and then I can see all the properties that were included when this model was exported. So I exported this from Tecla Structures and then you can see these are the properties that I chose to include with it. So part position, assembly position, name, profile, material, all that sort of stuff. That can be customized and you can choose what you want to send with the file. But oftentimes there's additional data that you want to track within the model here within Trimble Connect, but you don't necessarily want to go back to the authoring software to have to add that, include it again in the export, and then upload a new version. So for that reason, we've created the Property Set Manager, which allows you to create any sort of properties or metadata on the fly to use within Trimble Connect to track things, to report, and that sort of stuff. So the way that we can access that is by clicking on this button up here and it gives me two options. The first is to add property. So if I had already created properties, I could just add those to this object. Or I can come in and I can manage the property set library. So this option will only be available if you're an admin on the project. And since I am, I'll just go ahead and click on that and then it will open up the property set manager. And this is where I can create my own libraries of data that I want my organization to be able to see and to be able to edit. So I'll just go ahead and click on new library and I'll give this library a name. So I'll just call it the name of my company. So I'll just call this Trimble Solutions USA. And then to add the property sets, I can just come down here and click the add button and then I can give this the property set name. So let's say the first thing that we want to track would be, for example, like erection workflow. So I'll just type that in there. And then I can click on add property. So within the erection workflow, what are the properties that I want to track or what are the things that are important to me? So the first one is would be site status. So I'll just go ahead and type that in. And then here I have the option to determine the property type. So I could use text, I could set it to be a number, I can choose from these measurement options. There's a drop down choice, true, false, date, or URL. So in this example, I'll just choose a drop down choice. And then I can just type in what the option should be. So let's call this in transit. I'll go ahead and hit enter and type the next one. So call this on site. And then we'll call this one installed. So I can add as many as I want. Uh, just for this example, I'll just leave those three there. And then I can continue to add additional properties or I can just go ahead and be done at this point. So let me just add one more here for the erection workflow. So let's say that we want to track the erection completion date. So I'll just type that in and then from the drop down, I'll change that to be date. All right, so that's all that I want to include on the erection workflow. Let me just go ahead and add one more. So I'll just set up a new property set name and let's call this in model review. So for example, if we wanted to use this to be able to review the model, we could do that and then we can set up any type of properties that we want to track and colorize the model by or report or, or anything like that. So I'll go ahead and click on add property and let's call this approval status. And then I'll change the option here to be drop down and then I can just type in whatever options that I want. So let's call this approved and I'll hit enter. We'll call this approved as noted. And then let's call this revise and resubmit. All right. Go ahead and add a couple more just to show you different options. So let's call this approval date. And I can again change this to the date setting. And then I'll just add one more as approved by. And I'll just leave that as text, allowing those people just to type in whatever they want. All right, so now that that's complete, again, I can continue to add more. This will suffice for now, so I'll go ahead and click on Publish. That will then make those available for me to use over here in the 3D model. So I'll just refresh this just so that we can pull those in and make sure we have all the up-to-date information. So let me turn the model back on. 
And now what we can do is I can come in and I can click on objects and I can begin adding those properties to the objects here within the model. So if I come back up here, now I have the option here to add properties. And if I expand this, you can see that I can choose from all of these. So if I want to turn all of these on for this object, I can do that. Or for example, if I just wanted to say, nah, just show me the in-model review statuses, then I could do that. So for now, I'll just leave those both on and go ahead and click on done. And now you can see here's all the properties that came hard-coded with the model. And now these are the ones that I've created on the fly with the property set manager that I can begin to track. So I can come up here to click on edit properties and here's my drop down. So if I want to change this to in transit, for example, and choose a date, I can do that and click done. And as soon as I click done, this information is stored within our property set cloud. So this isn't written to the model file anywhere or on your hard drive. This information is stored in the cloud, allowing everybody to be able to access this information in real time. So the way that these property sets work is object by object. So if I come in and click a new object, you can see that I don't have those property sets there because I haven't added them yet. I do have those available here. Once I click back on that beam, as you can see. So to continue, let me just select a few more members and I can go through and add the properties. So just to show you how this would work, let's say I only wanted to track the erection information on these. I can turn that on, go to edit, choose new options in the drop down and then save that information away. So let's just show one more example here. We'll get that other option available and then we'll go take a look at the content browser. So if you wanted to add all of these at one time, you could just select the entire model and then enable them for all of your objects. In this example, I'm just showing them uh, just the one by one. So there I have the various objects with these properties on them, all right? And then using the property pane, I can come in here and I can just click on these and I can view the data per the object. But if I want to view all of the information in a different way instead of just object by object, that's where we can come in and we can start using the content browser. So if I click on the data table tab over here on the left, you can see that it will load this information into a different view. So right now I'll just go ahead and close this panel and let me just turn this to all objects. So here this will give me a list of all of the objects now that are in the model and it will then show me the information that I want to be able to view here and all this can be customized and I'll show you that here in a minute. So I have the option to view the information for all objects or for selected objects. So here I just have that one object selected and you can see the information that's shown. Well if I want to change or customize this and then add that site status property I can come up here and I can customize that using the columns option. So let's say that I want to come in and create my own saved settings. So I'll just go ahead and type in Tecla settings, for example. And then I can clear out any of this information that maybe I don't want to see. So let's just strip this all the way down and then let's just build something from scratch. So let's say the first thing that we want to see is profile. So I can type in profile and then real easy, I can just click and drag this over. We could also type in material. So I can drag that over, whatever else we want to see. Let's say we want to see the assembly mark. So let's bring that over. And what this is, is just showing me all of the property sets that were included when this model was generated or any of the properties that I created on the fly. So if I scroll down here, you can see here's all of the things uh, that initially were sent across. So if I search in here for site status, then I can see that this is the one that we created as well. So I'll just click and drag that over. And let's say that I save those, click OK. And then now this information will change for me to be able to view that. So you can see that with this one selected object, if I click on this button, it'll zoom to the selection. So for this one selected object, the status, the site status is on site. Here's my assembly, part position, profile, material, weight, or anything else that I may want to add. So if I change this back to all objects, let's say that we then want to organize this by the site status. So I can click and drag that over. And now you can see that I have that one member that is set to in transit. Here I have the three that were set to installed and then three that were set on site. 
And so here within the content browser, if I would want to interact with any of this, I can select an object and right click and say that I want to select it in 3D. I can then zoom to select it if I want to view information specific to that object. Again, back to the right click menu, if I want to export any of this data to a CSV file, we can. We have the option to save the organizer, which is a different video that I'll make later. Uh, colorize groups, I'll show that here in a minute. And then you can also copy and paste the data here from this data table anywhere that you may want. All right, so if I minimize these, then we can come back here and let's go ahead and zoom out and take a look at the entire model. And I'll show you this colorize option now. So anytime you have anything grouped within the content browser, we have the option here to then colorize the groups. And then it will show me the key here. So here in transit is in this purple color, installed is in green, and then on site is in this reddish color with everything else being colorized. So here instantly I can view that information visually within the 3D model, or I can view that here within the content browser to help me easily understand and digest the status or the information that we're tracking through these property sets. And if I turn off the colorization, everything will go back to normal. And then if I want to come in and begin tracking or adding additional properties to these objects, then I can certainly do that just like we showed before. So these two tools work together in a great way to be able to add any sort of data to the model that you would like. And then you have the ability to colorize the model to view that as well as view it here within the content browser and export that information as needed. So these two features are extensions that come with the Trimble Connect Business Premium license that allows you to create the libraries and add the data. If you have a Trimble Connect Business license, you can view any of the properties that are added there. But to be able to edit or author the data or to create new libraries, you'll need a business premium license. So as always, we invite you to try these tools out, send us any feedback that you may have, and we hope you enjoyed this new development.